Cassandra is the senior analyst of Envi at uh, the Environmental Defense Fund um, in the organization's Office of Chief Scientist. Um, she was heavily involved in the launch of EDF's methane mapping project, which she'll be talking about now. Uh, it's a partnership between the EDF and Google Earth Outreach. Prior to EDF, uh, Cassandra worked at the Delaware State Senate after receiving her master's in energy and environmental policy at the University of Delaware. So please join me in welcoming Cassandra. Thank you. Well, uh, hi everyone, and thank you, Geo for Good, for having me today. Uh, my name is Cassie Burnett, and I'm with Environmental Defense Fund, otherwise known as EDF. We are an environmental advocacy organization built on a foundation of sound science, economic solutions, and diverse partnerships. So over the, over the past few years, uh, EDF has increasingly focused on methane. So methane is an extremely potent greenhouse gas and is also a key component of natural gas. In the short term, uh, methane is about 84 times as potent as carbon dioxide. And to put that into perspective, about 25% of the warming we're experiencing today is a result of methane. So you can see why this is a very important issue. Um, so reducing methane emissions now can decrease the rate of global warming in the next few decades, allowing time for people and ecosystems to adjust to its impacts. So to better understand how much and where methane is leaking, EDF commissioned its largest series of scientific studies aimed at examining methane leakage across the natural gas supply chain. Uh, one place in the natural gas supply chain where methane can leak unburned directly to the atmosphere is the local distribution system or the network of pipes that delivers natural gas to our homes. The utilities that manage these systems and the scientists that study it routinely monitor these systems for uh, safety purposes. But because uh, pipeline repair and replacement is really expensive, uh, small leaks can persist for months or even years. So utilities um, immediately fix anything deemed to be a safety threat. This, this pipeline replacement and repair, since it's so expensive, it goes really, really slowly, obviously. And it also, um, methane is such a potent greenhouse gas, uh, it can end up to be a big climate problem. So in methane's case, we knew that uh, the available methods were not enough to quickly and easily determine the relative size and location of leaks. And we also knew that tacking on methane sensors to the existing network of stationary air quality sensors would not give us the granularity we needed. So in 2012, EDF approached Google with the idea of working together to measure uh, air quality using mobile sensors. Google was really excited about this challenge, thankfully, and came on board. So in 2012, uh, we uh, tacked on methane sensors to, uh, third-party methane sensors actually, to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, to three uh, street view cars and uh, collected methane data over, um, over three U.S. cities and urban areas, Boston, Indianapolis, and Staten Island. And then we published maps of the leaks we found. So my specific role on the project is managing uh, project progress, um, creating website and advocacy content, and uh, directing the street view cars in conjunction with street view operations. So by deploying street view cars in this way, we collected approximately 15 million data points over a period of about two years. EDF partnered with Joe Von Fisher at Colorado State University to process this data and to uh, create an algorithm to analyze uh, the data to determine the relative size and location of the leaks. So to calibrate this algorithm, uh, Joe and his fellow researchers conducted controlled release experiments where research vehicles drove through plumes of methane released at known rates. EDF also partnered with utilities um, in each of the map cities to validate our data against the utilities data on known leaks. So we're now actually working with Google's Earth Outreach teams and um, Earth Engine teams to find a better way to process our data with Joe's algorithm in Earth Engine. And actually, a member of Joe's team is here today, um, Adam Gaylord. He's in the back. Uh, do you want to just wave or maybe stand up? Uh, if you have any data processing questions, uh, they should definitely be directed towards Adam. He's really amazing. Um, I'm sure he'd be able to you know, talk with you over the course of the rest of the week. After data processing, we turned our leak size data into maps. And the objectives of our maps was really twofold. So first, we wanted to help utilities identify which of these like, smaller leaks were the largest, and then prioritize their repair efforts. Thank you. And second, um, we wanted to encourage constructive action by the public, action that could influence stakeholders like regulatory authorities, utility states, and the federal government to prioritize um, infrastructure replacement and repair. 
So as you can see here, Boston had a high number of small uh, leaks, partially attributable to the age of Boston's system and the fact that the pipes there are made of potentially corrosive materials, often due to the fact that it's an older system. Um, Staten Island, you can see here at the bottom, was about as leaky as Boston on a per mile basis. Uh, but the ambient concentration of methane in the air in Staten Island was actually um, higher than the other two locations because of a large methane producing landfill in the area. And in Indianapolis, uh, you know, it's a very tight system. You can see just on this screen, there's only three leaks present, but there was a total of five. Um, this system is actually really unique because the utility there had, um, is actually a municipality, so uh, it can funnel more of its profits back into its infrastructure instead of having to dole them out to shareholders. So um, as you can see here in this, really, in this legend, um, on the far left side, we've been the leaks based on low, medium, and high uh, based on their leak rate, and we've assigned a climate equivalency to each one, um, as you can see here based on cars driven, and you can actually, under high, it's actually quite a bit of miles. And then also there's this really interesting feature when you click each of the leaks that tells you a little bit more about the leak that we found. So for example, like you know when it was collected. And also if you zoom way in, uh, when it gets populated, you'll see that um, there's actually some blue lines where, uh, that show where we've driven. Um, okay, so it looks like I'm, I'm out of time, but just really, really quickly, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of social science and user testing that went into these maps to frame them in, in the you know, proper way, evaluating everything from language to colors to dot size. Um, and uh, you know, as far as next steps for uh, our work, you know, EDF's looking to map more cities over the coming year uh, for methane, and we're also looking to apply this methodology across other environmental and human health pollutants. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, I'm happy to take additional questions, and I really just want to thank uh, Geo for good again for inviting me to speak, and also a special shout out to Karen, who's in the back. Um, she's been an amazing advocate, and working with her has been totally wonderful. So thanks again. I'm wondering about the uh, impact of agriculture methane production versus leaks of natural gas systems. Sure. So uh, natural gas operations makes up about 30%, I believe, of the total uh, U.S. Uh, you know methane emissions and. Uh, you know, landfills, agriculture, um, things like that are all kind of part of the remaining, um, you know, the remaining 70%. And within the natural gas operations, the local distribution sector is only about 20% of that 30%. So this is a small, a small component, a relatively small component of uh, the natural gas operations. But when you combine it with the rest of EDF's like 16 or 18 now studies, um, it actually adds up to a really big piece of the pie. Thank you. Thank you.